2020 has been very good to SpaceX. The aerospace firm has passed a number of notable milestones throughout the year and achieved virtually every goal it set out for itself. The company earned a coveted NASA spaceflight certification, became the first private firm to ferry astronauts to the ISS, inked deals with both private industry and the U.S. Space Force, and made significant progress towards building a fully reusable rocket system that could revolutionize how and how quickly people get off planet. The year started off with a splash, quite literally. On January 7th, more than a month after it had launched, the Dragon cargo capsule of mission CRS-19 hit the water just west of Baja, California. The subsequent CRS-20 mission in March marked the 20th time overall that SpaceX vehicles had resupplied the ISS and returned safely to Earth, hauling some 94,000 pounds of supplies and equipment up to the ISS and ferrying another 74,000 pounds of cargo back down to the planet. Speaking of equipment recovery, SpaceX made headlines in July when it successfully grabbed both halves of the capsule's nose cone fairings using a gigantic capture net affixed to a recovery boat. Taken together, the fairings are worth about $6 million, so being able to snag them before they slam into the Atlantic and potentially suffer damage is a handy capability to have. Following a successful demonstration of the Dragon Crew Capsule's launch escape system in January, which forcefully separates the crew module from the Falcon 9 rocket it rides upon should something go wrong during liftoff, SpaceX retired the OG cargo capsule design in favor of the more versatile and capable Dragon 2 in April. The new crew capsule faced its first major challenge in June as part of the Demo 2 mission, when SpaceX ferried astronauts Robert Bankin and Douglas Hurley up to the ISS. This marked the first time that a private space firm had brought living, breathing humans up to the space station, as well as the first time that U.S. astronauts have launched from U.S. soil since the demise of the shuttle program in 2011. Bankin and Hurley stayed aboard the ISS for roughly a month before getting back into the crew capsule and riding it safely down the planet's gravity well for a dramatic water landing just off the east coast. SpaceX followed up that impressive feat in November when the Crew-1 mission hauled NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi up to the ISS for the start of their six-month stint. SpaceX has plans for two more crewed launches, the first coming in 2021, then the second coming in the following year. But SpaceX is no mere orbital taxi service. The company's cargo hauling business is booming as well. In August, Space Force's Space and Missile Command announced that it had awarded SpaceX a five-year contract for its National Security Space Launch Services, essentially putting spy satellites into orbit. The contract runs through 2024, with the first launch, along with its whopping $316 million price tag, to take place in 2022. Less clandestine, but no less important, SpaceX also won a multi-year contract from Space Force to carry a new class of GPS satellites into orbit. Built by Lockheed Martin, the GPS-3 space vehicle will have three times better accuracy and up to eight times improved anti-jamming capabilities than the current generation. What's more, it will remain in orbit for 15 years, 25% longer than the current generation of satellites. And it's not just the US that SpaceX is working for, the company launched the ANASYS-2, a secure communications satellite for the South Korean Agency for Defense Development, into geosynchronous orbit in July. Then, in August, the company lifted Argentina's saocom one b an Earth observation satellite used to provide radar data to emergency responders, into orbit as well. The SAUCOM launch was notable in that when it took off from Cape Canaveral, the rocket took a southern route that would lead it towards Cuba, rather than east as virtually every other launch from that site has headed since 1969. It's rare to have polar orbit launches, such as this one, leave from the East Coast. Typically, they fly out of Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, so that way they don't have to fly over any island countries that we've nearly started a nuclear war with. However, SpaceX managed to finagle a special Air Force exemption thanks to the Falcon 9's ability to automatically self-destruct should it diverge from its intended flight path, so the chances of it falling onto populated areas is almost nil. Also, most of California was on fire at the time, so Vandenberg wasn't exactly open for business when SpaceX needed it. SpaceX's Starlink program has been rife with success throughout 2020. The company set an ambitious goal of putting a thousand of the diminutive broadband communication satellites into orbit by the end of the year. As of late November, SpaceX has already launched more than 950 of them. The work is just beginning, however, as the company hopes to eventually put more than 42,000 of them into the sky, blanketing the globe with connectivity. That broadband access comes at a price, however, and not just the $99 a month SpaceX is charging to access its Starlink beta internet service. 
Shortly after the program began, astronomers began raising concerns that this fleet of reflective microsatellites could hinder the work of ground-based telescopes and could even potentially set back scientific progress in general. The warnings culminated with hundreds of scientists and researchers signing an open letter in August arguing that no combination of mitigations can completely avoid the impacts of satellite trails on the science programs of the coming generation. In response, SpaceX has started to add solar shields to the Starlinks in an effort to reduce their reflectivity. Looking ahead, SpaceX knows it can't rely on its Falcon 9s and Dragon crew capsules forever. That's why the company is already working on a super heavy replacement that combines the rocket and capsule into a simple unified design. They call it the Starship. This launch vehicle won't actually take humans to Mars and beyond, but it will drastically reduce the turnaround time needed between launches, meaning we'll be able to put more people and equipment into orbit faster and more cost-effectively than we do today. We just need to get the starships to stop exploding first. The fourth prototype starship, designated SN4, experienced a catastrophic explosion and meltdown during engine testing back in May, which followed a string of mishaps, delays, and setbacks for the fledgling spacecraft, but rocket science is supposed to be hard. SpaceX managed to get it right in August with SN5, its fifth prototype produced, which successfully demonstrated a short hop flight, lifting itself 150 meters into the air, then setting down on a separate launch pad a short distance away. The Starship's next task will require it to lift off and fly to a height of 50,000 feet before gently descending back to its landing pad. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has indicated that the test will be conducted imminently. No matter what happens, SpaceX's performance in 2020 has already had a lasting impact on the aerospace industry. Combined SpaceX's already sizable revenue stream, around $2 billion as of 2019, with its burgeoning military, scientific, and commercial endeavors, and it's hard to see how the company won't continue its market dominance in the years to come.